Okay, now I want to talk about scientific formulas. And I know a lot of you get really anxious when we talk about formulas. I think a lot of you had ex bad experiences in high school, uh, especially with the hard sciences or hard maths, whatever. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. Just think of a formula as a recipe. When we talk about uh, the Coca-Cola Coca formula or uh, 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 on SpongeBob, the uh, is it Krusty Krabs a uh, secret formula? So just think of a formula as a, another way of saying a recipe. Maybe it's a little less intimidating. Okay. So let me um, give me just two seconds to go to the first one. Okay. I'm going to talk about formulas. I'm going to pick out one that I know that is on one of the practice tests. Uh, it may be on your uh, practice test. It may be on your GED test. Then I'm hoping you're able to um, extrapolate, which means take from it uh, some information and transfer it to well, maybe the problem that you get. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about formulas. And I know you get really nervous about formulas. We want to take it really, really carefully. Now, when you're given a problem uh, with a formula, sometimes, most of the times on the GD practice test, it will be a word problem. There'll be a scenario like this happens and then therefore that happens and here's the formula and tell me what's the end result. So the first thing is to read the question. If you read the question and there's some vocabulary that you're not familiar with, um, don't let it concern you. Just take it and subtract, maybe substitute it for a word that you do know. And then maybe as you read it, you can kind of figure out what the definition is. Usually on the GED test or the My GED test, they used to define it for you in the question. They'll say, this is a question about force and the force is this, or this is a question about you know, something else. And, and they usually in the question will give you the definition of the word. And they also will give you the formula. So, the, and this is another thing is, what is it asking? I know I say this a lot in my classes. What does a question ask you in every topic? Number one thing is students don't take time and read the question and think about what is actually being asked. I had a student who complained. She said that she said, what's the question asking so many times if it was a drinking game, she'd be in uh, intoxicated coma. Uh, but I do say it a lot. And I, I know I did, but it's because it's, it's so important. Uh, it's the difference between giving uh, the answer correctly or incorrect. All right, copy the formula. I cannot stress this enough, okay? Uh, if you're on the test, they're gonna give you some scratch. I think now they're giving whiteboards and copy it down. Make sure you copy it correctly. Make sure you got the negatives and the purposes. Make sure you copy the formula down. One, it, it'll be in front of you when you're working on the problem. And two, it'll kind of trigger something in your head. And that's you go plug in the numbers. They're gonna give you all the information in the problem. Um, you may have to figure out a missing element, but they will give you most likely give you the most of the information and then you'll have to just find the missing element. And then you're gonna solve the problem. Okay, so first read, think about what they're asking. Um, copy the formula, uh, then you can plug in the numbers, okay? On the my GED test and the GED test, they have a highlighter. And as you read the problem, Highlight the numbers, okay? So if you said this, 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 this needs to go wherever M is, then highlight that in blue, or kind of come up with a code for you. But it, it, the GD and the GD test, I think they offer five or six different highlight colors. I use them all the time, especially when I'm teaching. And, and students don't, I, I don't know why. Um, and so the next, is, let's look at this. Uh, this is something, you're not gonna get this problem on the test because I just made it up. I can't give you, I cannot give you actual uh, questions from the test because it's a copyrighted, but this is something similar. A white car has a mass of 790 kilograms um, and it's traveling at a velocity of 50 meters per second. A black car has a mass of 750, 90 uh, kilograms, it's traveling at a velocity of 70 meters per second. And the difference between these two cars, kinetic energy is the velocity of X number of joules. Now, the reason I did it in metric is that I'm, I think all the science questions, all the formula questions are done in the metric system. If you happen to get one and the old English system, just, just use the formula as they give it to you. 
Now, uh, what is the difference of the two? That's the question. I didn't put it in a question form because sometimes the, you're not going to get a question mark. The difference in the cards is clearly is relative to X number of joules. So I'm saying X. They want to know what X is. How, you got one car who's traveling at a velocity of 50 meters per second, and you have a black car that's traveling at 70. Obviously, the black car is, is traveling much faster. It's going to cover much more ground. That's not the question. The question is, what is the difference in the kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is a form of energy or object uh, or particle by reason of its motion, okay? And the energy that you create through movement. Uh, sports uh, uh, kinetology is probably one of the most uh, important uh, outside the athletes and coaches in sports, um, especially professional sports, you know, how much energy does the skater need to make that twirl? How, how, what kinetic energy is required for this gymnast to jump from this uh, balance beam and twist and land on her feet? We talk about kinetic energy. All right, then we're going to talk about um, velocity. It's the speed of something in a given direction. It's not just speed. I have an exercise bike and I can ride it really fast. I'm not going anywhere. But velocity is also moving in a direction. And I love this little um, snail with a uh, little jetpack there. And just to show you what velocity is. All right, so now we're looking at velocity. Uh, this is probably a word that you don't know. Kinetic energy that you're not really familiar with. But you kind of, when you read the question, you kind of know what we're talking about. All right. What is the question? And what the difference in the two cars, kinetic energy and the velocity of X number of joules. Okay. The joules is just a measurement. It's like uh, okay, watt power or amps or, um, uh, you know, a calorie is what it's just a term of measurement you know pounds ounces and so joules is just the how we measure the kinetic energy the difference when you hear the word difference in a math problem science problem is uh, the difference in, in the amount and usually it will, it will always uh, involve in subtraction so when you see the word difference you automatically know that you're going to have to take one sum a number a group and subtract another bit from it and find out how they are different. The formula. Formula, or just uh, uh, someone has going in and try to figure out how the relationship of whatever particular um, problem there is and come up with a simplified way to do it. So, uh, there's, of course, we know the formulas for the area of the circle. We have formulas for math shapes, three, uh, three dimensionals. We have physics problems, formulas, we have chemistry formulas. And these things are just um, helps us uh, solve the problems. It's, it's basically, they're giving us the recipe. So that's all that it is. Okay, so here's our formula. One half mass velocity squared is equals kinetic energy. Mass is the weight of uh, an object on Earth. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically the weight of the car. And for the purposes of this uh, exercise, I did a little Googling and I figured out how much do race cars weigh. And, uh, so, I'm weighing, so the average was like 790 kilograms. Um, kilograms. Um, so uh, it seems like it would be more than that. Is it kilograms? Okay. Uh, anyway, just for the purpose of this test. And then uh, the velocity is 50 uh, meters per second. And the black cars is 70 meters per second. So here's the formula. So you can copy that down. It's going to be 1 half m uh, velocity squared equals kinetic energy. And k stands for kinetic energy. Now, here's our formula. This is our recipe. So what's going to go here? The mass. Okay, what's well, going to go here? Either this number, the 50, or the 70. Okay, so we're going to have to do this problem twice. We're going to have to get the, the white cars numbers, and then we're going to have to get the black cars numbers. Okay, so I took the white car first, 
And so anyway, I made little notes. You see how I've got, I put, got on the notes here. I've got the Y car here. So when you do the problem, kind of make sure you know which one you're doing. The Y car, write your formula down, write your information over here in the corner. See how I've got the mass is 790, the velocity is 50. So I can remember that. And all you're going to do is plug in the numbers. So the M, you're going to put the 790. The V, you're going to put 50. And it's going to be squared. If something is squared, you're going to multiply it by itself again, twice. And when you do that, we take 790 and multiply it by 50 times 50. We end up with 19755, uh, 1975000. Now, do you see this one half here? When you, when you multiply something by a, a fraction, you're going to uh, divide it by the numerator and multiply it by the denominator. So since we have one in our numerator, numerator we're not going to have to worry about multiplication. So to divide that number, so the velocity is going to be 97, uh, 987,500 is the velocity for the white car. So you can write that down. And uh, it's very important that you do that, the whole sentence, because when you're doing the math problem, you forget, well, where does these numbers go? Well, 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 because you, when you get down with the black car, you're going like, oh, what, what, what was it that I wrote down? So write this down so you don't forget it. So now we're going to do the black car. Same way, we're going to plug in the numbers, multiply the mass times the velocity. And this car has the velocity a little bit a higher number, which is 70. And we're going to come up with our higher numbers, 387, and divide by two because we multiplied it by one half. And that's going to give us nine. But 935500 is the velocity of the black car. Please write that down because if you don't, you're like, oh, which velocity went with which one? Give me a few seconds to copy that. All right, so now we have the white car's velocity and we have the black car's velocity. And what we're going to do, we want the difference. So we're going to have to subtract the two big numbers. And we are, so we take the black car and subtract the white car, and this is our answer. So that's all you had to do. I know formulas are scary, and you're going to probably have two or three on your test. So don't, if you're uncomfortable, what you can do on the top of the test, you can flag the answer. answer. Uh, it, it, there's a little uh, flag, and you click it, and it'll become yellow. So when you finish the test, if you've got time, go back to that problem and work it out. Don't um, just get hung up on it. If, if, if you think I can't get this done, don't stay too long on it because you have the test as time. But flag it and come back to it. And, and maybe when, when you have maybe, let's just say if you have five minutes of the test, you can put the whole five minutes on it. And you might surprise yourself. Now, most science questions or formula questions are the short answer questions. You don't, you, usually they don't give you an, uh, all those, uh, what you call, um, Egyptian answers like um, A, B, C, D choices. You usually have to type in the actual number. So it doesn't leave you any uh, avenue to guess. You're just gonna actually have to work it out. Um, you might get lucky and, and get one of those, uh, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, uh, A, B, C, D questions, uh, but you're probably not. Uh, so don't, you know, so if you do have, uh, you have to time and put in something. Don't leave it blank. Um, do the best you can. And uh, you, be, you might surprise yourself. So stop that. So, so go back is formulas. You're going to read the question, look at the formula, copy the formula. And basically what I do is I take the highlighter and highlight whatever information they give for color, like say if there's a mass, I'm gonna call that that number in blue, uh, speed or velocity, whatever it is that they give you. So you can find it in the problem. They always give you all the information in the problem. So they give you the formula. So just copy the formula, plug in the numbers and do the math. Okay. Anyway, I hope this helps. Don't get intimidated. Uh, if you can't do this problem, don't think you have failed the test. It, it, this is only one or two problems. And you might get the next uh, formula question, but don't skip over it and not do it. Uh, but don't hang, don't stay on it too long either. So basically look at it. You think you can solve it, solve it. You think maybe you need some more work, flag it, come back to it later.